let's get a little closer. everybody welcome to episode 49 this is november die project um we are filming wednesday november 3rd so happy november i guess this is torment giant spain my cat that i talk about all the time he is sitting on my table and refuses to leave so i guess he's a co-host today okay so because it's Die Project, we have a million things to go over. I have Die Projects to show you, and then the fail from my shop opening to show you. Um, I also have Die Swatches that I promised to show you, and I also have this month's Knit Crate to unbox. So let's get started, okay. Um, I am wearing the uh, blanket cardigan by Heart Hook Home. That if you watch, you this was done last month, so you'll be well familiar with it. But I'll have uh, the project linked below. Um, so let's start with whips. What am I starting with? Okay, we're gonna start with the top. I know I showed you tops <laughs> last time. Uh, that I was or yarn that I was considering doing tops. I didn't do those. I went with, if you remember, I bought a bunch of Wool of the Andes 50 gram balls to make tops with, which means I don't have to make a sweater accompanying it. So um, I just started this one in the colorway Jurassic, which is this clay green that I really, really like. It's like a bluey green, like a clay. Do you know what I mean when I say clay? Like clay that you put on your face and you know what I mean clay <laughs> um, so we're on the second ball and this is my it was my night knitting it's not my night knitting now my shellography is my night knitting now because I'm at the border and we'll show that again at the end um, so you won't have to deal with you don't want to worry about spoilers so you keep watching it's fine um, my other whip is one of our dye projects for this month. We have like three dye projects <laughs> by accident. Um, I started the Witchling sweater pattern by Dragon Horde Designs. Um, and I gotta tell you, I got, I got problems already. Um, the first was... I didn't swatch and I should have swatched um, but I, I was down to the wire dyeing the yarn and drying it and doing a million other things um, so I didn't swatch um, and here's the thing on her Ravel on the Ravelry page for this project it says it lists DK yarn as the yarn suggested but in the actual pattern it calls for her sport yarn so they're both her yarns the Ravelry page lists a DK, which is 230 yards to 100 grams, and the Sport, which is 328 yards to 100 grams. So it's quite a big difference in yarn weight, um, size-wise, as to thickness. Okay, so I could not get gauge on the sport. I went with sport because I thought I was being smart and I went, oh, it's in the actual pattern. So I'm gonna go with what the pattern went with, right? So anyway, after I started, I went through the projects and went for the testers because apparently those are the only people using sport. Um, and the one I found, she went down to a four, which is what I went down to and see how open this is already and I'm at I'm one stitch over gauge so I have an extra stitch per gauge which is going to mess me up um, it's going to make the sweater a little bit tighter all the way around um, uh, 
and I'm not sure if that's going to be an issue or not because I might have to look at the schematic. But I went with um, when I make when I have made stockinette shawls in sport weight, I use a four millimeter needle, and that's as big as I'm comfortable doing because it's gonna just get too big. Um, now for sweater. It all depends again, like I always say, on the fabric you like. So had I to do this over again, and when I do this next time, I'm going to use DK. I have plenty of DK to dye up. Um, and I'm already planning colors for my second one. Um, so I'm doing this one on sport. The next one I'll do on DK, and I'll let you know. But I would say if you are a loose knitter as I am I would go with the DK and do the DK especially if you are not looking for a thin sweater. If you live in a warm climate and you don't need a heavy sweater then I would go ahead and use sport but I live where it snows so this is not going to be a very warm sweater um, and I would just scrap it and re-dye uh, some DK. However, I don't have anything to do with this sport if I don't do this, unless I'm going to do another pair of shorts. <laughs> or another two pairs, because this I dyed four skeins of this, so I'd like to just use it. Um, so my plan right now is to make it to uh, the, the sleeve division block it, try it on, see what I think, and then I'll make my decision. So I'm not 100% happy with this. And the reason I, I think it calls for both is she posted on her Instagram the other day, I don't know if it was yesterday or the day before, that she has a new pattern coming out um, that is a real beginner, <laughs> real beginner sweater. Um, and in the description as she on her Instagram post, she said, you can use sport or DK depending on how heavy you want your sweater. So I'm like, why was that information not included in this pattern or on this, the Ravelry page connected to this? So I'm a little bit miffed about that because, and I wonder if anybody else like bought, if you wait, if you, cause I always buy the pattern first and I read through the pattern before I buy my yarn. Cause you know, because that gives you more specs than usually the Ravelry page. Plus, like, it lists the yard. The yardage isn't always listed on the Ravelry page, so I want to make sure I buy enough. So, I just don't understand why all the information needed isn't given. That's really my only gripe with any pattern is... Why does it not contain all the information I need in order to su su successfully complete the pattern? I don't think that's asking too much. I really don't. Okay, so those are my two whips. The, the Witchling is our first uh, November dye project. Our second November dye project is my Cash Aaron double layer hat, okay, which this was dyed at 4% Dharma True Black. Then my husband decided he also wanted a cashmere hat, but in this is um, fingering weight uh, cash cashmere uh, eighty ten ten merino cash nylon. Uh, this is Dharma's. Let's see, it's shorter. They have shorter skeins. This is Dharma's um, base, and it's actually pretty soft. It wasn't that soft when I got it, but after being dyed and I guess washed it. Now, here's one thing that I'm glad this is happening in a dye project because this happens way too often, even when I check at your figure eight ties. Okay, your, your yarn is tied with figure eights in order to keep um, it from becoming a giant knotted mess. Okay, that's why we put these little things on it so we can keep the skein in one piece, okay? These keep, well, attempt to keep the strands going in the same order so it's not like a rat's nest. But see what happens sometimes when you're dying, the finger, the um, figure eight ties become really tight. Um, 
and can cause resist on your skeins. This happens so often. Um, and there's like main figure eights and then there's other figure eights. So before I even put them in the pots, I make sure that the figure eights are loose and this happened on every figure eight. So something must have happened in the pot and this wasn't a pot by itself. So maybe there was too much movement and it got too, I'm not really sure. But, um, so I decided what I'm going to do is I'm going to make up the hat because this dyed, here's, okay. If this was any other color besides black, I would put it in a pot and re-dye. I would just re-dye. I would, I would just keep, I would put like 1% in and put this back in the pot for, for the day. Well, not for the whole day. You know how I do. Okay. You put this in your pot of water. This is dry. Your water is tap water. You put this in your pot. Cover it with water. Like cover this so it is completely in, immersed in water. Okay? And you leave it there at least half hour, an hour. Leave it there. I leave it overnight. Uh, so when I want a full all over color. Okay? Then in the morning, I get up. I pull these out because there's no dye in the water. I pull them out of the water. I measure my dye, put my dye in, mix it up. Um, then I put this back in, okay? Stir up the thing with the dye, plop this in. I really, you can stir this. You have to be careful uh, that you're doing it lightly and you're not tangling the yarn. Then I turn on the heat. These are done in stock pots. So I turn up the heat and maybe 20 minutes, half hour on high. And then I put them on low and I let them go for like another hour. You, it doesn't need to be hot. You just need, if you see steam, you're fine. Don't, it doesn't need to bubble. Just see some steam. It's fine. You can measure if you want. Um, but you're going to want to go a little lower if you're doing uh, merino or cashmere, I mean. So, um, then what I do is I take my tong things and I grab this and I pull it out of, I just pull it up out of the water so I can look in the water to see if the water's cleared. If the water has not, oh wait, no, we haven't put our acid in yet. So after like 20 minutes and it's been, st it's steaming now, I pull it out like that and then I put my acid in and I stir my acid around and then I put this back in. On low, it's still on low, a little bit of steam on low. Then every 20 minutes I come and check. And when the water's clear, I, all, all I do to check is I take my tongs and I pull this up out of the water and I see if the water has cleared. And you'll know the water's clear if you can see the bottom of the water. I mean the bottom of the pot. If you can see the bottom of your pot, your, your water's cleared. So then when it's clear, you put this back in, turn off the heat. It has a lid this whole time to keep the heat in, obviously. I leave it there. I leave it there until the next morning <laughs> so it can cool down and all the acid and everything, it can come to us. It'll leach up the last, if there's any remaining in there. So the next morning I wash. That's how I do this. So I didn't actually see this was totally not dyed until that next morning after it was washed and I hung it up to dry. So at that point, I would have, had it been any other color, I would have put it back in. I would have put it back in uh, with some more dye. And by that time, you're really kind of messed up if it's any other color. Um, but then any other color would probably look fine tonal, you know what I mean? You can also use a fingertip sprayer, which is what I'm going to do. Um, I'm going to put, now I dyed this at a 4%. I'm going to put 1% of dye in a fingertip sprayer. You know what a fingertip, it looks like this. It's not one of these ones. It's the little tiny one, usually like hairspray and hair stuff is in little, but they're big ones, but you can buy little plain ones that are like this, little fingertip sprayer. 1% solution in there with some acid. 
water, obviously, fill it up and make a 1% stock solution, one gram to 100 milliliters. If you need that much, you can do 0.5 grams in 50 milliliters, whatever, however much you need, um, and spray. So I do 1% because you kind of have to spray a couple times and then you can see. Then you can just steam it. That's what I'm planning to do with this, but I'm probably gonna wait until I do the, I'm gonna make the hat first. Cause then if I steam it, then I, that's the blocking. <laughs> then I don't have to also block it. So I, it's like the second die can be the block. Um, so that's my plan for that. And if it looks fine, we might just leave it, but that's probably what I'm gonna do. Now, my cash Aaron did not do that. So it had to be the ties. Okay. Um, our other one that I did was um, my sport. This is my contrast for the witchling. So this is sport, and I did a 5% dragon's blood. And you can see there's a bit of, I don't know if you can see. Yeah, see right here, there's a bit lighter. This is darker, light, dark, light. Uh, so we did get some t uh, tonality at the, uh, again, at the figure eight. Um, so you really gotta be careful with your figure eights. Be very, very careful with your figure eights. Um, but other, I mean, I kind of figured this is gonna come out tonal and I don't care. Um, because when you're tonal with color, it's different than being tonal with black because tonal with black is usually like white. Like you'll get white spots, not just you'll get parts that are a lighter red. You know, it's not like you get a gray spot, it's white. Um, so that's different. Okay, so. Um, I'm gonna show you, we're gonna do dye project first and then I'm gonna show you my um, dye swatches that I promised to show you because it actually comes into play. So if you recall, this is one of the skeins available in my shop right now. This is the Siren and this is a one quarter color with um, three quarter black. It goes black all the way down, but we're talking about this part right here, which is a gradient. Um, so remember I told you that we did, I tried the same thing on the non superwash. Last episode, I kept saying superwash when I meant non superwash, but I'm pretty sure you understood what I meant. Um, these felt it a little bit, as you can see. See this? It's it's not. I mean, you can. It's totally fine. You can actually still use it. It's it's not terrible, but it's not a, good enough to sell. I'll probably make something with these. I'm not sure what yet. So anyway. I wanted to show you this for a couple reasons um, because I have never dyed I've never dyed 100% non superwash and this is the base I use all the time which is 100% or no this is 75% merino 25% nylon this is 100% non superwash merino okay so I wanted to show you the differences and how they take the color because these have the exact same color uh, depth of shade. The only difference is the color used. In this color, I used cyan, straight cyan. I did not mix it with any other. And this one, I used magenta, straight magenta. So we're working with our primary colors, magenta. Um, I did not use any other color in this either. And because I, I, in my head, I wanted, I knew that for the non-super wash, because I know it takes color slower. I thought pink was my best bet. The magenta was my best bet because it takes color really fast. Um, this base takes this pink very, very fast. It just sucks it right up. So I thought, I know we want to not have to, we want to get the non superwash in and out of the pot at the lowest temperature as possible, as soon as possible. So we want to be quick and delicate with it. I obviously was not delicate enough. Um, that's why I'm not going to be offering non superwash in my shop just yet. Um, so here's what we did the exact same thing at the, you know, for both things. So I wanted to show the difference, but first I want to show you the math of what we did and how we got what we did. Okay. It's real quick. So.
we have two colors here, one quarter and three quarter, okay? Because we, we only, we're only working with two colors. So the gradient is a quarter of the, one quarter of the um, skein, and then the black is three quarter of the skein. Okay, so I decided we wanted a point, can you see point one? There's a point one right there. Point one depth of shade over the one quarter, okay? Now we dyed four skeins at a time, so we have to uh, times that by four. So one quarter by four is simply one, and that's why I circled one and the one and the one and the four. See how it's one, one, okay? You can still calculate it on your calculator, it's fine. Um, so we take point 0.1, which is our depth of shade, times 1, which is how many skeins surface, This how much skeins, even though there's four, do you get what I say when we're doing one quarter skeins? One quarter of the skein, but we're doing four skeins. So that gives us the size of one skein. Does that make sense to you? So. 0.1 depth of shade times 1 is 0.1 grams. That would give us 0.1 grams to get 1% depth of shade on one quarter of four skeins. Okay, but over here, but I doubled the water, okay? So I did 0.2 grams, and I did this to both. So because I was using more water, because... I was doing a gradient because it, wa it wasn't going to be 0.1% over the whole thing. It was going to be, I just arbitrarily picked 0.1 because I wasn't sure I could go any smaller than that. I wasn't comfortable going any smaller than that as a measurement. Um, so I figured we'll do the 0.1 at the tip and then layer out and then just get darker as we go because then we're layering the point one each layer adds point one because i didn't know how many layers i was going to get and how much area i was actually going to have to this was like an experiment um so instead of doing 100 milliliters i did 200 milliliters okay that's why i doubled it so it actually still gave me the 1% depth of shade. I just had two because I doubled the water. Does that make sense? It still ended out to a 0.1 depth of shade. Okay, are you with me? Leave questions below if you have questions. So that's the pink and the blue. I did the, the same for both. I did them both exactly the same. So for the three quarter, I needed 3% because you know I do black on bare at 3%. Um, so we have three quarters of the skein, but we have four of them, so that gives me the surface area of three skeins. So three times three is nine grams, so that was nine grams of black for that. Now this, the water doesn't matter because it's all in the same bin thing. Okay, so like the, how I did these, was I put them in the pot like this. I put them in the pan. They were in a pan, a catering pan, like this. Lined up like this. Obviously, I didn't, they were all the same color. <laughs> so I had four blues, and then the next pan I had four pinks, okay? I laid them like this. So I could kind of see where the tip was and keep that it's hard to show you something that was laying in a pan like this. So I did that to keep the tip um, as light as possible. Now you can see there is some that did not take the dye all the way, but it's not as crisp as the other one. It's more of a, it's even more of a gradient actually. So the gradient came out better on the non superwash than it did on so do you see what I did so I started actually I think I started on the ends 
I don't think I started on the on the middle. Why is there Velcro right there? So I started at the, like I marked the one quarter just so I would have an idea. I mean, it doesn't have to be, you know, one specifically one quarter. Um, so I started here and just started layering, layering, and layering. That's why I didn't do the beginning first because I didn't want to layer out. I wanted to layer in just in case it got there first because you can put more dye on but you can't take dye away um, so that's how I did both of them the same way and this because it hits faster we had some undyed see that real white blown out that's just undyed yarn or very lightly lightly blue but a lot of it is undyed and it's kind of neat because it gives you that kind of hurt your eyes kind of thing. So this is the exact same technique on two different bases. Um, and then look at the blacks. Because that black is purple. That black is purple. And this is Dharma's True Black. And I got to tell you. When you do Dharma's True Black, not at a 4 or 3%, it is purple. It is purple. So I'm kind of not surprised that that turned purple. Um, but I kind of like it. I mean, there are black parts. Um, <coughs> but it's very, very tonal and purpley and black. So if I, if I was to put black on this again, this is Prochem, Prochemical and Dye, WF Black 672, Wash Fast Acid Dye, okay? Um, so... That's what I'm saying. Their um, black actually goes gray and not purple. Probably should have brought Dharma's out here to show you, but it doesn't matter. I also got their charcoal gray 670, which is really similar. Really, really similar. Uh, just the black didn't go as black. This is a little, this is showing a little bit blue, but I really don't see blue. Um, really see gray. And I guess I'm two together. They're really pretty there it's really hard to tell them apart honestly um, I can only tell them apart by the black because the black does get black and the charcoal doesn't get black even if I went up to 5% and the 5% still is not a they're pretty similar I also got mouse which not my favorite um, because it's mouse gray but it's it's brown um, that's brown that is a brown gray so I guess if you want a brown gray that's fine I really like the be the beginning here these beginnings because they're so a light especially this one it's like like an actual almost white because you know our undyed yarn is like creamy and that makes it look almost like white and then the second one kind of makes it look like a really light tan so uh, I won't use mouse because it's tan and I don't do I don't do browns um, so Prochem black and charcoal gray really recommend those really like those 
actually let's keep these out here because those don't go there. Um, then the other colors I got from, okay, this is from Dharma's My Ox Blood 5. I don't know why it's here. Uh, Cabernet from Dharma. Cabernet from Dharma, and I did this from 0.1 to 5. And these are to darken my uh, reds without, uh, or pinks actually, probably. Um, with uh, to bring a little bit more dimension to the color. Um, the five percent, that's two, three, and five percent. Can you see these? Two, three, and five. So that two is really, really dark. And then the other ones, that five is is pretty much black. The three is like a black, a reddy black, a reddish black, and the, the gosh. To get that dark at a 2% is ridiculous to me. I mean, it's perfect at the 1%. At the 1%, it's, perf it's a perfect deep burgundy. Um, then we have spruce. This was from Jacquard. And I did 1% to, again, 5%. With dark, with dark colors, I do to 5% because um, I want to see how dark they'll go and if they'll go black or not. I hear that, but I don't see anybody. Um... So here's spruce. It's a little bit blue. It's really, I mean, it's a green blue, but it's, it's, I mean, it's a blue green. It's green, obviously, but it's, it's pretty blue. I like it though. I think it'll be good for uh, deepening this stuff. This one's my favorite. This is deep purple. I almost didn't get this one because it wasn't on our frost yarn is, uh, her video is what prompted me to get these. So you should watch her video. Um, she did not have deep purple on her list. And this is the one I think I'm going to use the most because it's a nice cold purple, you know, cool tone, cool tone purple. God, I really like that really light purple too. Um, uh, but look at how deep that goes at a 5%. That is a really, really pretty, I think that's going to help get to my deep eggplant color that I'm trying to get. The next one is aubergine. And again, the 5% is almost black. This is really, really brown. This is a really, really brown color. I would actually compare this to espresso bean. And espresso bean might be more purple, to be honest with you. But I probably won't be using this one. It's real pretty at the 1%. At the 1%, it's, it's a... It's a purpley brown. It's pretty at a 1%. But I really don't like browns all that much. I think it's my neighbor. Oh, anyway, I wanted to say um, the quarter color, if you remember, is this. This is the quarter color. Um, so this is how much color, but then each one of these, I'm trying to find one that's alone that's just one because a lot of them aren't just alone. You get little. But these would all be gradients. So it would be a gradient of the thing. And then these would be gradients. So your gradient might or may not match up there. So I'm so excited to see how they work up. Okay. So is that it for dye projects? Yeah, because I want to show you my dye swatches, which is why if you're doing super wash, Actually, any time I think I'm not dying at like a three or four percent, I'm probably going to use that Pro Chem black because it's it's not purple. So I probably will switch from Dharma True Black. Maybe I'm not sure because I really like the richness of the Dharma True Black. 
I'm going to have to dye something like 4% Pro Chem Black and see. I should have done it with my husband's hat, but I didn't. I should have done that. That's what I should have done. Okay, so the next thing I'm dyeing black, plain black, is getting, I'm going to do Pro Chem at 4%, see what happens. That's my new plan. I don't know why I like Dharma so much. It's got like a like a richness to it that's not like do you know what I mean I don't really know what I mean like it's not okay if you are goth girl TM you know that blacks come in a bunch of undertones you have green blacks blue blacks brown blacks red blacks purple blacks Dharma is black doesn't ever actually look purple black to me unless it's not at a full saturation like a four percent three percent and typically it doesn't really look purple at, at all to me the first time it's looked purple is in that super wash so but then that got me thinking you know if i mix it with other colors am i going to get that purple tone in there so maybe pro chem will be better if i'm not and at that point, why bother buying two if I can do the Pro Chem at four and I like it? I'm going to have to do that. Um, I'm gonna, just going to have to do that. Okay, so that's all of our dye projects. We did a lot of dyeing this month. We're like ahead, so we'll go ahead and do um, Knit Crate. I must be flying through this. I got a lot to do. Um, fiber feast. Pull up a seat and join us for a decadent fiber feast as the smell of pumpkin pie drifts through the air. We settle back into a cozy armchair and reach for a skinny yarn. It's the perfect time to work up a cozy sweater while relaxing beneath layers of blankets as we prepare for holidays surrounded by family and friends. Bundle up against that chill in the air and create something you'll treasure for years to come. It's time to dig into this veritable fiber feast with luxurious yarns that will warm your fingers and toes just like loved ones warm our hearts. Oh, here's the colors. We got some reds, greens, oranges, purples, a little bit of blue. Is that a fig? Um, so... There are three colors. I'm trying to, I don't know if that QR code doesn't, but here are the three or three colors right here: orange, <laughs> burgundy, and lime green. Um, I'm hoping for if if it's not that uh, burgundy, it's getting dyed like black because. <laughs> I don't like orange or that green. Um, what is this? They're not even telling me the... Okay, I cut the bag open, but I have not looked yet. And it didn't come in a crate. It came in this bag. I'm terrified to see what it is. Okay, you guys are going to have to look first. course it is. So, Vitalana Tweety Sheep is what it's called. Tweety Sheep. 90% wool, 10% Donegal Neps, Aaron weight 150 yards. I wonder if I can make a top in this. Um, Ninety percent wool. It's pretty soft. I don't know what kind of wool that is. Obviously, the neps though are like tan and cream and black. You know what? I think I'm gonna try to make this burgundy. Do you think I can make this? Bur it's it's already orange. I mean, how to color correct to burgundy couldn't be too hard. Cut it. <gasps> 
Or I could resist die and it could be like a pumpkin thing. I just don't think I can wear this much orange, you know what I mean? Um, but Aaron Waite, I'm pretty sure one of the tops I made, one of my tops, was Aaron Waite. It was a, um, 150. That seems thicker than Aaron Waite, no? Because isn't Aaron Waite like 181? 181 so 150 is almost like a bulky is like what 120 I gotta always make a hat out of it <laughs> I think I make a double air hat out of it if I want um, that might be fun to, to do one like dye one black and leave one orange and do a hat because then whichever color because they're reversible I could do that um it's a nice orange oh it's called pumpkin spiced everything is the name of the colorway um also I could keep this for a giveaway so it's a it's a really nice base it's um it's soft it's next to skin soft for sure um oh there's something else in here knit crate my project oh there's are little sticky tabs it says my project ingredients And it's got a line with a checkbox, which you're not going to be able to see because my thing's blown out. So it looks to be like 50-ish um, sticky, sticky tabs. Um, anyway, 45 minutes, y'all. Oh, we haven't done shallography. Okay, so... Um, I can talk about shallography for 15 minutes. Okay, so next week's episode is a mystery. We don't actually have, <laughs> I don't actually, we, I don't actually have a topic for next week's episode. So I can either take the week off or come up with something or maybe just show shallography. I'm not sure. Um, but that seems kind of, I mean, you've been, if you've been watching Shawlography, you've seen, you've seen, I mean, if you've been watching my show and staying to watch my Shawlography, you've already seen Shaw. Oh my God. What does it matter? I've got 40 subscribers and like 20 people actually watch. So it really doesn't matter what I do. I could like dance around in a toga or something. And it's not going to get me any more views. Um, did I go over everything? Okay. So. Next week will be a surprise. For real, I have no idea what we're going to... Shellography will be done next week, for sure. Um, my top might... It depends. I think shellography is going to go down to the wire. I think it's going to go down to the wire. I'm going to have to block it at least the night before. Probably the day before, because it's so big. And it's not warm out anymore. So... I doubt I'll have the top done. I for sure will not have that sweater done. That sweater is going to, I have a feeling I'm going to get that sweater, you know, separated for sleeves and I'm going to try it on and I'm going to hate it and I'm going to have to re-dye and decade. <laughs> Which wouldn't be a problem except for in the goth knitting group, I'm doing a knit along for the sweater. So you, I have to do it. I have to finish it. Plus, what am I going to do with all that black um, sport weight? I don't know. Make a different sport weight top? Like, come on. Okay. This is the point where... This is the point where I'm going to say uh, goodbye and see you next week if you don't want spoilers for shellography, okay? So... See you next week. Bye. 
Okay, so for shellography, <clears throat> spoilers are coming. Um, let's see, last Friday, so last week, uh, the last clue was released, and I did not see him going this way. Did you see him going this way? I did not. I thought we were going to have something like the chevrons and the fantastic. I thought we, he, he was going to go that way, but he didn't. And instead, we've got this border that I'm about halfway done with. And none of my hands are riveted. I didn't want to weave them in as I went because I kept making mistakes. So... I did something different. Um, if you remember, here, I didn't do them in order. I mirrored them. I mirrored my colors. So because I mirrored them, I counted out how many stripes were at the bottom. <laughs> and I'm going to do the same thing that I'm going to mirror. So I just finished. I'm at the middle. There are three middle stripes. There are three stripes in the middle. So because there's five, okay. I have, I end up with five middle stripes. So I did five, however many repeats of five colors. Okay. I'm not sure if my stitch count was right, to be honest. So we have, let's see, black is console one. One, two, three, four, five. So five. So I did five, um, repeats of the colors. So here, since I'm about to restart the color, which is teal, teal, gray, dark gray, burgundy, light gray, black. That's the color I went with because the teal and the dark gray were the two I had the most uh, yardage left over. I had the most, well, weight. I had the most weight left over in these two. So I decided the middle is going to be, since there are an odd number, there is going to be a middle stripe. So I figured we're going to recreate this, which is dark gray with teal on both sides, since I had the most teal left. So the middle is going to be just like that. Dark gray in the middle, teal on both sides, and then we'll just reverse this order so it'll mirror. So we'll just reverse this. Yeah. I think because I hate stripes, it's the only way I could do stripes is if I can, if I can mirror them, then they're not as annoying to me. I just don't like stripes. I don't know why I don't like stripes. I just don't. You think I would because they're uniform and I, I, for some reason I don't. So here's the full. Um, I thought it's kind of small for the Stephen West thing. I mean, I've never done one before, but they're always like huge, right? So I was like, this is, I was expecting a bigger border, I think. But I'm super happy to not have to do that I-cord bind off with like 500 stitches, right? So I like that it's incorporated in the bind off. I'm very thankful for that. Um, so actually what I'm doing is, oh, I didn't bring it with me. I'm actually using um, a, a single DPN to work the end, um, because it's so cumbersome. So I'm not actually using these, this, I'm using this and I you just use a DPN to go back and forth for this. Um, so yeah, I'm, then I have to weave in a, a hundred ends, probably more than that. No, I'm, I, I started weaving in most of them are weaved in. Okay, so right here is where I didn't weave in. Because if I don't weave them in, I, I knot them together so I know, hey, that's knotted, that needs woven in. So if there's no knot, I know I wove it in already. So there's some over here. Oh, some over here that are knotted, that need woven in. So. I think I stopped at the bobbles. Yeah, because I think at the bobbles, I didn't have anywhere to weave in with the bobbles. I didn't know where it was going. So then we have all these from the stripes, which will be easy because that's just little maneuvering. That should be easy. 
Um, so yeah, this I work on at night because it's pretty easy, but I, I have messed up a couple of times and have to rip out and redo because of that um, decrease, that early decrease that sometimes I skip it and without even thinking because of the whole... We've gotten the whole thing going, knit the first three, so your brain's like still in. See, I don't see that, that bind off so tight and the, the guard are so stretchy and then it feels like it's strangled by that border, but I'm sure it'll be, it'll be fine. So I can't wait to get this uh, off the needles and done. And um, I'm not doing the hyper, hyper knit. Um, I'm not sure I'm going to do another one. This, this, this is exhausting, to be honest with you, and it's, it was, it was definitely fun. I'm glad I did it, but they're not exactly my style, and, um, like, I will obviously keep this and wear this, because it's a, I'm, as far as I'm concerned, it's a work of art, and I put a lot of work into it, um, but it's just not, I think he's a genius, it's just really not my style. It's just not. So, but I, I mean, of course, I still am going to see what he's doing and, and if he does other stuff that, like that slumber, slumber shawl, whatever one I have ready to do uh, with the old shale, that's more my, th my thing. So anyway, that is all I got. So, um, I guess it's going to be another short episode because I'm not doing 80 million things and our dye project was pretty easy because I only did the, I didn't mix colors because I didn't want to add that I wanted to be, that was more about the technique and the placement and to see where that went and I'm really excited to take it and add colors like The gradients like to do it doesn't have to be a gradient it could be a fade it could be a fade of color I think I'm probably gonna take one of these because um, it's really not that bad um, and do a top-down like Hillary maybe and you know one of these and see how it looks with the fade Because the yardage is like 437, I think, so I think it should be fine. If I think I'm getting low on yardage, I might um, do like a mesh, do the mesh one maybe. Um, but I'd like to see how that gradient works out. Um, I can't believe I felt it. <laughs> this is why I don't dye fiber, because that would be even worse. Um, I don't know what my problem is because I've done I've done blends of you know pure wool. I've done blends of non superwash wool and been fine. So it must be something in the blend. It must be something in the in the one hundred percent merino maybe. Maybe one hundred percent merino is easier to felt than whatever wool is in my blends. That I've done because most of the knit crate is not super wash wool and that just says wool it doesn't even say what kind it just says wool and it says hand wash gently dry flat so I'm assuming it's not super wash because it doesn't say super wash wool oh also guys I put my yarns in the well no one's buying my yarn yet but um I put those in Ravelry database so the yarns in there um I haven't done my patterns yet I'm I'm not sure what's keeping me up with that, but I will get them in there soon. Um, I'll get them in there soon, probably, maybe. Okay, I'm going because it's cold in here and I have nothing else to talk about. So we'll see you next week for a surprise uh, episode. I don't want to say surprise, an unknown, a TBD. Uh, um, I don't know because all the other ones that I had planned, I've already scheduled them. So I'd, I was like, oh, we could do this or this, but I've already scheduled those. So, um, and I'm not releasing any, 
any powder next week that's for sure I got nothing I got nothing ready to go so oh I want to say this weekend we were going to do uh, the Brianna capelet that I've been putting off like f for like four months now I'm not going to do that this weekend unless shawlography is done so I'm going to take this weekend to finish shawlography not work on the sweater because that's a Monday through Friday so Saturday Sunday I'm probably going to finish shawlography just so it can be done because I want I really want it done and off the needles and then because then I'll free me up for <clears throat> you know a bunch of other stuff so I'm not sure Brian you're gonna see Brianna reunion capelet uh, next week but we'll do it the following week if not okay so I, I know I promised <laughs> then I'm going back on that promise because I thought I'd have enough time to get shallography done but I, I had too much with opening the shop and everything that I had zero time okay so let's say goodbye thank you for spending um this hour or less with me um i hope you had a good time i hope you had a relaxing time and um take care of yourselves i'll see you next week bye